We have talked about fair value gaps, buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity, candlesticks, and market structure shift within this trading course. And now we're going to talk about, I think, the most popular ICT concept of all of its concepts, which is called order blocks. And these are actually pretty simple to identify, but there are different order blocks. Propulsion blocks, change in state of delivery, and continuation order blocks, training order blocks, etc. And we're going to go over all of these order blocks, so make sure to watch all the way to the end of this video. The first order block we're going to talk about, which is also probably the most popular order block of all of them, is called the continuation order block, or basically the trending order block. And this is actually pretty simple. So when price is making higher highs and higher lows, basically we're in an uptrend, then we're usually going to have some downclose candles within this uptrend. And these downclose candles are going to act as support to then send price higher up to an important level. And an example of this would be right here. We can see that price, of course, is in an uptrend, trending higher, right? And then we have these singular or consecutive downclose candles. And these downclose candles, we could be anticipating price to act as support. For example, right here, we can see we have two downclose candles. And we can see price reach down into these downclose candles after making a close above it. And that's very important to notice. We have to make a close or a body close above the order blocks to validate them. So we can see right after price, price made a close above these two consecutive downclose candles, price instantly made a retracement and then use that order block to then act as support to send price higher. And when I am using these order blocks, I prefer to use the opening price of the order block. So basically right here, when we have a decent sized body compared to the wicks. So for example, if this right here was an order block, then we'll probably just use the whole order block. But when we're talking about this kind of order block where the wicks are not that large compared to the body, then I just prefer to use the opening price of that order block. So then we can see price makes a close above the order block, returns into the order block, then use that order block to push price higher. And again, we can see right here, price creates another downclose candle, price makes a close above that downclose candle with this candle right here, price makes a close above it, makes a retracement into that downclose candle, reach the opening price and a bit further. From there, we can also see that this was paired with a fair value gap. So we have two reasons to anticipate price moving higher. And again, price makes another downclose candle. This downclose candle does not act as support. And we can see that price just keeps moving higher. This is also how we can identify high probability trends when price is creating these downclose candles and using these downclose candles to then send price higher. Then we know the bullish trend is still in place and price have not reached that important level that we are looking for. And I'm just going to show you a simple drawing example because then it is going to be a bit easier to, for you to understand. So let's say we have a downclose candle within here. And this downwards candle, as we just talked about before, price is going to make a retracement into. And then from there, we can be anticipating price to move higher. And then just, just keep going, price makes downwards candles, use that downwards candle to push price higher. But then we could reach that area, for example, let's say a major buy side liquidity or a long term high. Then from there, we could be anticipating price to then move lower. And when we have a downclose candle, we could be anticipating that downclose candle to not act as support as we already have reached that important level. So then price is bearish. So from there, we could be anticipating price to then use up close candles to act as resistance. And then that just keeps going. Just a quick bearish example of this trending order block or continuation order block, we can see that price is currently trending lower. And we can see that we have these two consecutive upclose candles. And when we have two upclose candles, I normally just look at the first upclose candle and then to see if price is going to use that upclose candle to then push price lower. So for example, this right here, this is the first candle of these two candles. Then I'm going to look at that candle. And we can see price makes a close beneath that upclose candle and from there makes a retracement small mohawk through that opening price and from there pushes lower. 
And again, we see up close candle, price makes a close beneath that up close candle, makes a retracement up into that up close candle, and then use it as resistance. So that's how we can identify these trends again. Price using up close candles to then act as resistance, pushing price lower, reaching an important level, which could be buy side liquidity or a higher time frame fair value gap. The next order block that we're going to talk about is called a change in state of delivery. And basically, a change in state of delivery is up close candles or a up close candle going up into an important level, for example, a fair value gap or buy side liquidity slash sell side liquidity. And these up close candles or up close candle going up into that buy side liquidity or high time frame fair value gap, we want to see price mix a close beneath. And then we can use the change in state of delivery as a confirmation tool, and then we could be anticipating lower prices. So, right here, we can see that price swept buy side liquidity. And if we just move down into the lower time frame, we can then see that we have two up close candles sweeping that buy side liquidity. And when price makes a close beneath the opening price of the lowest candle on the change in state of delivery, then the change in state of delivery is valid. So it does not need to close beneath the wick, only the opening price. And then that kind of gives us confirmation price is now willing to move lower. So it's kind of like a market structure shift. And we could also use a change in state of delivery as a trade entry, where we would enter at the opening price, put our stop loss at this high as we would no longer want to see the high get reached for, and then we would want to target sell side liquidity, which could be all the way down here. So let's see if price reached that sell side liquidity. And we do see price did indeed reach that sell side liquidity. A bullish SMT would be that price reached into a higher time frame fair value gap or sweep buy side liquidity slash sell side liquidity. And for this example, we can see that price is starting to deliver from this 15 minute fair value gap, which we'd be considering as a higher time frame fair value gap on the one minute time frame. But how can we get that early trade down in the fair value gap where we can see price is now starting to move higher or deliver from that 15 minute fair value gap? Well, that's by using a change in state of delivery. As we talked about before, it can be used as a both trend tree, also as a confirmation tool like a market structure shift. So let's go down into the one minute time frame where we can actually see that this leg down here, where we have three down close candles, this leg was the manipulation leg before price started to move higher. Now, how can we anticipate that price is now, or get a confirmation that price is now bullish? Well, that's by looking for that bullish SMT. And these three down close candles, we can see the price closes above the highest candles opening price. And we talked about before that a change in state of delivery don't need to close above the wick, only the opening price. And then we can see right after price closed above the opening price, it wicked down into this change in state of delivery, makes made, made a small, small, small mohawk, and then after that, start to deliver higher, respecting that 15 minute fair value gap delivery. So that's also how we can both use a change in state of delivery as a confirmation tool and also as a trade entry. Next up, we're going to talk about a propulsion block. And a propulsion block is a bit like the first order block we talk about. It's basically just price continuating on that bullish trend, but then price racks from another order block. So what I mean by this is that right here we can see that we have a order block. This one right here. This is a order block. And when price reach into this order block, we would like to see price move higher, right? So this is kind of that training order block we talk about in the start. So this order block that got created based on this order block, so this is basically a order block of an order block, then the second order block we call a propulsion block. And the propulsion block, we would like to see price not reach the mean threshold. As the mean threshold is a very sensitive sensitive area for a propulsion block. <clears throat> so let's just reach out our Fibonacci tool. And by the way, the mean threshold is the 0 0.5 range of the order block. So if a consequent encouragement on a favela gap is a 0 0.5 range, then the mean threshold is a 0 0.5 range on a order block. Right here we can see that price makes that retracement. It fails to reach the mean threshold of this propulsion block. And then after that, price starts to expand higher, which we would like to see when price reach down into a propulsion block. 
A bearish example of this propulsion block would be this right here, where we can see that we have this up close candle. Price makes a close beneath this up close candle, and that means this is now a order block. Then we can see price makes a retracement up into this order block, respects the order block, and then after that moves lower. And then we can see we actually have two up close candles going up into that order block. And these two up close candles would be considered as a propulsion block when price closes beneath the two up close candles. Then we can see price makes a retracement into the up close candles, does not reach the mean threshold as we can see, and now we will be anticipating a strong reaction to the downside. And we do see price just expands lower off of this propulsion block.